In this video, we're going to look at six probability situations that are listed in a handout. We'll look at an example of each of those six and how to solve them. Our first example, we'd like to look at the probability that z is less than a negative 0.25. That is, we're interested in finding the area in a standard normal curve that where the z values are less than a negative 2.5. So first, let's draw a picture. We're looking at a standard normal curve because we're using the variable z. That means that the mean of this distribution is 0 and that the standard deviation is 1. So if that's where 0 is and 1 is here and minus 1 is back here, we know how to draw the graph of this curve. A high point will be here. This will be about 60% of that high point. This will be about 60%. It will be concave down through this part and concave up out here. And we're interested in z values where the z is less than a negative uh, 0.25. So here's 0, here's minus 1, there's 0.5. There's about where a negative 0.25 is, and we're interested in those z values that are back here. So the area that we're looking for is this area right here. So there's the, <clears throat> the picture associated with this problem. And luckily, the function p norm in R is just built to do this job. P norm of negative 0.25. This is a normal distribution. Usually, in a using P norm, you have to say what the mean is and the standard deviation. But if it's a standard normal distribution, you don't even have to say that comma 0, comma 1. You can just say, ask R to do that job. So here's my uh, R compiler. When I run that script, I get this particular value. Now, since we're right here, let's just notice that if we ran, ran the script for P norm of negative 0.25 in a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, that of course that gives us that same result. If we are doing anything else other than a standard normal distribution, we would need to state what the mean and the standard deviation are. Now that's exactly what a p norm function does. It finds the area below a particular value. Now here's our second problem. In a standard normal curve, we want to find a c value so that if the z's are less than that c value, we've got an area of 45%. Begin by drawing a standard normal curve. It's a standard normal curve, so the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. We're going to be concave down here and concave up outside. So there's a rough sketch of that. We're in interested in the area to the left of C being 45%. If C was up here, the area to the left of that is more than 50%. So we know that C needs to be over here somewhere uh, to make that happen. We know that within one standard deviation, there's 68% of the population here. So there must be 34% of it here. If I took 50 minus 34%, that would only be 16% uh, out here. So our C value has got to be somewhere in this region right here. And we're looking at the Z values that are less than that. So this area right here we know is 45%. And we're trying to find this C value. That means that we're actually looking for the 45th percentile. The Q in Q norm stands for quantile. We're looking for the Q norm of 0 0.45. We're looking for the number C so that 45% of the population is below that. And I guess that means that 55% is, is above. So there's the command that we need in R. So there's the R script Q norm of 0 0.45. We're looking for the 45th percentile. And that's going to be at a negative. 0.125. In the next problem, we want to find out the probability that z is greater than 30%, greater than 0.3. That means that we're trying to find that area in a standard normal curve. We're going to get getting good at drawing a normal, standard normal curve. The mean is at 0. The standard deviation is 1. So there's one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. It'll be concave down here and concave up out this way. So there's a rough sketch. We're interested in z values that are greater than a 0 0.3. So there's 0, there's 1, there's 0.5, so 0.3 would be about right here. 
and we're interested in z values that are bigger than that. So those are the z values we're interested in. And so we're interested in finding this area. P norm of 0 0.3 is that green area. But we know that the total area under the curve is 1. So, the, so this purple area that we're trying to find is going to be a 1 minus that P norm of 0 0.3. Looking at that picture, I can see that that purple area is less than one half. P norm tells us the area below, so the area above is found by looking at one minus P norm, and notice that that's about 38%. The thing that I want you to do here is to be able to see the picture and see from the picture an approximation of what the answer is supposed to be. Our next problem, we want to know what C value so that if z is bigger than that c value, we get an area of 75%. That's the area above. That would mean that the area below would have to be 25%. We're looking for the, really, for the 25th percentile here. But let's draw a picture. When a statistician sees a problem about the probability of a normal distribution, they see in the back of their mind uh, this, this curve. Because I can't see in the back of your mind, I'm expecting you to draw that curve for me and show me what, uh, what you need to be seeing. Now, what we're looking for is some particular C value so that the area above that C value is 75%. I need to find this C value so that 75% of the population is above there. That means that 25% of it is below. I really need to know the Q norm of 25%. I'm looking for the 25th percentile. I'm going to show that by looking for a Q norm of 1 minus 0 0.75. And there's my R script saying that this number C is supposed to be a negative 0 0.674894. The next problem asks us to find the probability in a standard normal curve of the z value being between a negative 1.25 and 0 0.75. In other words, we're looking for the area under the curve between those two numbers. You're getting very good at drawing the curve. The, the high point is going to be at the mean, then at a standard deviation above the mean and below the mean. These heights are going to be about 60% of that height will be concave down here and concave up out here. So there's a rough sketch of our curve. Negative 1.5, 1 1.25 is about right there. There's negative 1.25. 0.75 will be, there's 0.5, there's 0.75. So we're interested in the z values between here and here. And we're looking at the uh, probability between there and there. So we're looking at this area right here. So the tool we have is to use a p-norm function. But if we did a p-norm of 0.75, it would tell us all of this area, which is too much. So we need to subtract off the area that shouldn't be there, and that's this area right here. But that can easily be found as the p-norm of a negative 1.75. So we take that one big area that and subtract off this area and that leaves us with the area that we need. And there's my R script calculating that. It looks like it's about 73%. Uh, okay, one more problem. In this problem, we want to look at a standard normal curve between a minus B and B so that the area between those is uh, 91%. Later on, we'll be calling this a 91% confidence interval. Now you're getting to the point that you're just seeing this sketch in the back of your mind. It's a standard normal curve, so the mean is at zero. One standard deviation above will be at one, and one standard deviation below will be at a minus one. will be concave down here and concave up out this part and concave up out this side. So there's a rough sketch, and what we want to do is find a B and a minus B. They'll be symmetric sisters of each other because this is symmetrical. So that 91% of the population is between those two values. So it's not going to be 1 and 1 because I know that that's about 68%. It's not going to be all the way out to 2 because that would be 95%. So that minus B is going to have to be around in here and the B is going to have to be around in here. So I'm looking at these Z values so that this, this is B and this is where a minus b is, and this is a symmetric piece, and so 
that this area is 91%. That's what we're looking for. Now this is a little bit more complicated problem. But think with me through this little script. Suppose that I call that 91% a CL for confidence level. And if I look at the area that's on the outside of that, these two pieces, that would be 1 minus that confidence level. For reasons that we haven't explained yet, I'm going to call that alpha. So this is what the code is saying. But that code is talking about this picture. It's saying that if I know this area in between here is 91%, then this area outside of here is 1 minus 91%, or it's really 9% that's out here. That means that 4.5% is here, and 4.5% is here because it's perfectly symmetrical. So the area in either one of those individual tails is going to be alpha divided by 2. And that's all because of the symmetry that's there. Now, if I want to find out what this B is, I could use a Q norm if I could tell R what this total area back here is. What we needed to do is tell R in a Q norm what this total area is. We know that this piece is a confidence level and this piece is a tail. So I could find B by looking at Q norm of the confidence level plus a tail. So running that script in our R compiler, we discover that that B value needs to be a 1.695398. Now I'd like you to think about two other ways that you could have found out what that B value is. Of course, if B value is this much, then minus B is a negative of that. Because the area under the curve is 1, and this green area up here has an area of a tail, I could find this area to the left by taking 1 minus this tail. So an, an alternative way of finding this answer is to look at Q norm of 1 minus a tail. And just to show that those are equivalent, I've added that line to our script. And of course, Q norm of 1 minus a tail returns the same result as Q norm of the confidence level plus a tail because they're both using the same area for calculating the Q norm. One more thing to look at. We know that this little red piece down here is a tail, has the area of a tail. So if I did Q norm of that tail, it would tell me what a minus B is. So therefore, if I wanted to find out what B is, I could ask R what a negative Q norm of that tail is. So there we are in our R compiler. We're looking at those three different ways to find that, that quantile. Okay, that's it. Those are our six probabilities that you need to be, be able to calculate based on a normal distribu standard normal distribution.